Hello everyone on the internet and thanks for tuning in. And welcome to another episode with me, Masrada Bashida, and with my token bro on the other side of Earth. It's Flyman! Hadene Kuze! You know, I honestly preferred the first rerun of when you said FINE WAVE! You did that. Did I? I? Better. But anyway, today, yes, we, uh, whatever he attempted, I don't know what, but anyway, we're going to be talking about Go Kaija! Yeah, he's more excited about this than I am. The ice, the bags under the ice, you know, lack of sleep because of the excitement. Um, okay. Anyway. Let's start this off. Let's start this off. First things first. As always, what did you think? La no, no. You know what? Build up to it. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I remember. Uh, you know, prior to yeah, you know, I watched this during broadcast uh, before episode one aired. I will say, you know, there are so many rumors going around because of it being an anniversary series and the massive hype leading up to it. I mean, you know, I do remember things saying like, oh, it'd be, a, it'd actually be a sequel to Go Sage Art, etc. I remember thing, you know, things being thrown around like that flaming blue, I was going to say that fucking blue robot, that fucking blue robot from Go Sage was going to be in. Well, Datus. Yeah, Datus. I heard Datus was going to be in it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I heard so many rumors going around, and then I think. I remember getting to the pirate rumours, and I must have, I can't remember what I must have thought, I must have, like, dismissed them as more rumours, and then I saw, like, a few of the, like, whoever it is, Duke Mon or whoever that go that went around at the time saying, oh, these are exclusives for the next Sentai, seeing some pirate costumes, like, uh, yeah, alright, mate, and then it actually got revealed as pirates, like, oh, okay, whoop de do. But I will say, I will, you know, when I had a proper look at them, I was impressed. Uh, what? You know, I remember seeing what the Go Kaio looked like. Thought it was pretty okay. Uh, the one thing that, you know, even for, you know, before the series started and throughout the series, is the fact that Go Kaio Red's called Captain Marvelous. So I'm just like, oh, surely they'll reveal his real name at some point. Surely they'll reveal his real name at some point. Captain Marvelous. Um, yeah, unless you want to add anything else, because... Well, there's so much more. I mean, again... I, I, mean, no, no, I mean, that's that's with each... The thing is, I remember hearing so much before the first episode. And yeah, I will say, even when the first episode did air, I was impressed, and... You know, I'll say, you know, and it is a very firm fan favourite. Uh, you know, I remember, I mean, you know, it's a firm fan favourite. I just remember, again, I had so much prior to the first episode. And I just remember, but the one thing I do remember is so much hatred. So many haters were like, oh, they're just trying to do what Decade did for Sentai. Uh, you know, they're trying to do for Sentai what Decade did for Carbon Rider. It's like, hmm. You know, I was like, okay, you know, the key thing, you know, it's like, all right, see how it goes. And frankly, you know, those haters haven't been able to say anything about Go Kaiju anymore because they really pulled it off. You know, I think, yeah, I mean, my press beam it was all right, it was all right before, it's all right now. But I just remember so many haters like, oh, you know, what the hell are they doing? It's mad, especially the number of writers. Well, guess what? 199 of them, balls. Uh, so... You know, again, I still think it's all right, but I just know so many people. I'm not saying that they were haters before, but yeah, you know, so many people just like, oh, still collecting Go Kaiju keys. They're mad, but you know, I can see how it's got value. I can see how it's popular. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know. So again, I just remember oh, so much hatred about the key system and the collection thing, and oh, Toei are trying to milk more money out of people again. Especially collectors and old bands, but you know, I think it's you know, I think it's neither here nor there, but I think it's quite cool. And yeah, that's you know, I remember seeing what Captain Marvel looked like. It's like, wow, he looks like a damn pirate. Um, what I'm uh, you know, just so much more of it. What I was going to say was in regards to the build-up and such that um, 
as like you said that uh, was it I barely knew much about it in that uh, all I knew was that it was uh, going to be a pyro themed and I was like wait a minute 35th anniversary pirates really and then well, it's the original isn't it it is don't get me wrong it's a, no but this is what I felt at the time it's like a WTF kind of thing seriously and then um on top, when like you mentioned, they announced, and I remember, I think I remember this, that uh, they announced that uh, the main character was going to be called Captain Marvel. So I'm like, really, really, kind of thing. And that was my build-up, really. That's how I is. I okay. And then the whole entirety of the key system and the humongous fat uh, Gokai Cellula. Oh, sorry, mobile rates, to be precise, but anyway. Mobile, mobile rates, yes. Uh, but, um, yeah, just how big and chunky they were. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? But then um, after the first episode, I w after I watched the first episode, just everything from the build-up just washed away. That like, I completely forgot. Because, yeah, like you said... It is nothing like... Uh, anyway, actually, I'm going to savor the, the the difference between Gokaijin, Decade, and such right at the end, in my opinion. I'm going to save it. Uh, well, all right. So, what... Do, I mean, I'll say, I absolutely loved the first episode. You know, it brought about how... You know, it basically set a very good precedent for the rest of the series. Uh, you know, it wasn't... A, you know, because, I mean, like, with something like Go Wonder and so many other Sentai series... They'll put all the efforts and gimmicks and whatnot right in the first episode, and then they fade out through the series. Whereas, at least Gokai had, you know, had all the gimmicks and stuff. You know, the whole Gokai change uh, in the first episode. At least they were consistent with it throughout the series. Yeah. yeah. So it was a good precedent. It was an honest precedent. Uh, you See. know, because you add Joe with the two swords, you add the um, Gokai Green Doc with the guns both guns you know so See, yeah they were consistent they were very consistent okay in my opinion on the first episode I love the fact that and I'm going to use um, a bit of a comparison if I may anniversary comparison because like you have at the moment of the time of this recording it's episode four that's already been aired of uh, Ninja, the 40th anniversary, and that's uh, how Ninja has more Easter eggs and references to previous Sentai than being other Sentai, if that makes sense. Whereas this one, there's barely any Easter eggs, so to say, but there's clever references, and they would bring in all the original casters' cameos of their previous self. I wouldn't even say uh, they uh, were references. Uh, no, 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 no I'll get... Hang on. Nin no. has references. Bokinja has references. Go Kaijo is just a flat out... You know, I mean, you can. I would even call it lazy. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's still lazy. That it's like, oh, you know, this is just us. You know, whatever was non-canon in the crossover films is relevant here. It wasn't references. They were flat out basically talking about whatever the hell they... Okay, specific. so basically reference and Easter egg, swap it around then between the Ninja and Gokai Joe, what I meant then. It's the, opposite. it's the opposite of Easter eggs. It's the opposite of references. It's just right. flat out, this is what it is. Yeah, this I suppose. It... But... It, it... I'll start again on that one then. It's just, I like the fact that there was that um, touch at the beginning with the curry house, for instance. There's a nod already. And then all of a sudden, um, also just before Marvelous takes one bite out of a curry, it completely blows up, and then you've got uh, what's it, the second uh, galactic war uh, going on, or about to start, anyways. And then the reason that uh, what's it, they say those um, what's it, uh, the, the school kids and the teacher was because not because uh, they were heroes or you know they're there to you know defeat the enemies. It's all because they destroyed their curry. Which I just loved that premise. I loved it. I just couldn't stop cracking after that. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, 
And yeah, I just love the uniqueness of it as well. It's like so much nostalgia when you see a Go Ranger for one thing, anyways, and then. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, you know, they just not only Go Ranger, but also didn't they do? Um, I've got guess right now. In the first episode, I can't remember how many they did, but I, I feel that they did a few more than just the one time. But anyway, um, but I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It's, it's a whole nostalgia bash on Epic level. Um, what did you... F oh, go on. You asked. So, okay, yeah, cool. Uh, alright, so what? All right, so throughout the series, what did we make of the main five characters, support characters, and villains? Do you want me to lead this one? Yeah, go for it. Okay, starting with the main five characters. Uh, I'm going to do a reverse on this one. Um, starting with I'm. Uh, I actually didn't mind that I'm, I, f I like the fact that she was this innocent looking princess, which she was from another planet, and the very, uh, as one would say, Lolita, or deliberate Lolita-esque uh, skirt um, uh, for, you know, the appearance, uh, looking all cutesy and whatever, but still, I like the character that, uh, and she has one very good episode for herself. Um, no, two, my bad. She has two episodes for herself, and both of which really gives her character, and I love them. It, even though it's only two, she really pulls it out of the park on them. Uh, then you've got Go Kayelo, which is uh, 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 Luca. Uh, which the, uh, she's the cat thief, so, so which is thief and such, and uh, also, um, what's more, they also give a, a, um, everyone sort of like roles on the ship, and in Lucas' case, she's like the the watch on the what uh, lookout on the yeah. uh, on the crow's nest. So I like that, and then. Um, uh, otherwise, you've got yeah, and then she's this tomboyish person who she has lost. I think that's why she was so popular as fan service as well, as well as being pretty, I guess. Who? Look at um, <laughs> oh, look at one. Um, and then you've got uh, well, uh Doc. Um. Uh, who's the engineer of the... Uh, uh, yeah, go on. Who's also the engineer of the ship, and then um, he's this, like, scared or a pacifist, almost like a pacifist-ish, unless if he has to, so. but... And I was like, uh, it's a bit of... But he's, like, the deliberate, annoying kind of a character, which you get used to after a couple of episodes, kind of thing. Um... Then you have Joe, brilliant, very, like, emotionless character, um, uh, who's the first mate to uh, Captain Marvelous. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Captain Marvelous. Uh, yeah, the captain of the ship who probably just, if anybody gets in his way, he would just take them out, kind of a person, but I, I just love, I did not expect the actor for what his age is to play something so well that you forget how old he actually looks, if that makes sense. To, to play for a red, to play a role of a red, he did a great job. To play a role for a red for an anniversary and also represent that's a it. Big, that's like big boots. That is like big it boots. It is. What's more, what's more, not only is it the anniversary, but also representing the other 34 series as well. Ooh, especially 34 reds. Yeah. He did an amazing job. I've got to agree with that. 
Yeah, because honestly, at first I thought, and I'll, I'll be honest, right, when I first saw Marvelous, right, in the chair, and I was like, hang on a minute, he looks like a very, like, 21-year-old in the, in playing in the big chair involved, if you know what I mean, literally in the captain's chair. And I was like, really, really? And then after, like, two episodes in, oh, my goodness, I completely forgot, you know, there's, like, a 21. I just saw Captain Marvelous. And for the viewer's sake, he has an amazing backstory. Oh, well, I'm going to I am go not going to say any more, but he has an amazing backstory. In fact, well, everyone, say... everyone has... I have not seen for a long time, actually. In, this is probably the only season of Sentai I've seen everyone having a semi-solid backstory. Each character. Huh. I mean... Right, because when... I mean, I'll, I'll say that... Yeah, I'll say that they definitely put effort into each character's backstory. I'll agree with... I'll say that much. But my personal opinion is I liked the personalities that were attributed to each character. But the backstories for each, I felt a little mixed. I mean, I'd say... Right, so going through them myself, Captain Marvelous, I absolutely loved his personality. Mm. You know, he was very sort of blase. You know, blase. Yeah, and then he still had to be the coolest and ba- ba- biggest badass. Did you think it was but like he had that uh, sodder attitude? Yeah, it was a mixture of sodder, but I've got to still look cool. So uh. it was a bit of... But the one thing, and again... Everyone can love his backstory with Akared and Basco, but I'm just like, I wasn't quite, I'll be genuinely honest, I liked his sort of, you know, camaraderie, treachery thing with Basco, mm-hmm. but I just did, I just wasn't feeling the Akared side of it, because yeah, Akared was the carryover from the Bokenja uh, anniversary. But I'm just like, I was expecting so much more from Aka Red, which isn't technically the backstory of Marvelous's fault. But I just felt that having that in there and then him trying to be like him and go, you know, boo hoo hoo, Aka Red, I just wasn't quite feeling that. I mean, when it comes to Aka Red, I kind of felt, you know, even from Bokenji year, I was like, oh, I reckon there'll be an Aka Red, an Owl Blue, a Kiro Yellow, you know, just for, for shits and giggles. And who knows, maybe like, next year they'll... More more pink. Maybe next year for the 40th they might do that, but <clears throat> I just wasn't feeling it, him being part of Captain Marvel's backstory in the way he was. So do you feel that oh. they basically shoehorned Aka Red in just to go, Hi! Just, they shoehorned him in just because it was an anniversary five years later. I mean, yeah, all right, well done. You brought an anniversary character back for the next anniversary. Oh. But no, I just wasn't <clears throat> feeling that. Although, although, hang on, hang on. When they got to the uh, episode, when they um, also got uh, Bokenja references in, right at the end, um, did you see the reference that uh, Boken Red made right at the end? Go on. Spoiler alert. Basically, uh, when Marvelous was going through his uh, like tough time kind of thing, basically they brought in uh, the original actor for a book and read in, um, and basically Akashi. Just sh- Akashi Satoru, yes, and then um, and then he basically just helped Marvelous out just to the adventurous side uh, or the thrill again, and then right at the end. Right at the end, uh, you see Akashi on the clifftop looking towards um, the sunset and also towards uh, Gokai Galleon saying, um, so I hope this was all right, Aka Red. And it's like, ah, oh, boom, I remember that kind of reference. And it's, it's like a nice little... Uh, I, mean, it's, I mean, Aka Red's role is very contrary to how... You know, in the anniversary, he was just like this semi-goofy character that had the address book of every Sentai Ranger. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> now, some dude with some keys, and he got betrayed by Basco, etc. Again, it just felt, you know, it's like it was a good I think, unique I think direction. I think we'll get to after the characters, but... A bit too long, as you say. 
I think we'll yeah. get to Akaved after characters, but what did you think? Uh, yeah, okay. So, going on to Joe, I liked his dry personality. I mean, he didn't have that much of a personality, to be honest, but I liked that. But his backstory was my favourite out of the five. Uh, you know, I liked how his senpai became, you know, da, 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 uh, the, you know, the nether guy, the guy with the patch eye. Um, you know, I liked, I really liked the story. I liked how he was trying to be the best swordsman. And for once, it wasn't the Red Ranger being a swordsman. It was, well, it was the Blue Ranger, which I think isn't unique. But I think, uh, you know, I just like the fact that it was him. And, you know, he had a... I'll be, but I will be totally honest. Sometimes I keep, I kept looking at Joe, thinking Joe was a girl, just because of the long hair, maybe, and you know the feminine face, I guess. <laughs> so I kept thinking Joe was a woman. And I was but like, don't forget like, they did do an episode with uh, Joe with makeup on. Don't even go there. Anyway, uh, but I, you know, Joe's backstory was my favourite. Gokai Green. I mean, because you mentioned him being the engineer, which I think he was, but I remember him more as being the chef. And that too. And that too. Yeah. So, you know, I kind and of liked his, I liked his goofy personality. Uh, yeah, I did kind of like his goofy personality, uh, but I will say his backstory, in my opinion, was the weakest. So I remember him being a scientist or something. I agree. But, so, but at the end of the day, when you've got like a strong anniversary series, you can't give every character that much of a big, badass backstory. I mean, because Kyoruja attempted that, and it just didn't quite work. But, you know, for, for you know, for Gokai as it was, they did a good effort for each one, but Gokai Green just felt a little weak. I mean, going straight on to Gokai Yellow, Luka, uh, obviously fan service, and it worked. Um... Character-wise, yeah, you know, very in-your-face, uh, like a gung-ho style. But, yeah, yeah, no buts about it. I'll say that she had a semi-decent backstory, but it felt a little vague. You know, they could have... I don't know, I don't know what they could have done. It just felt like, you know, it was a good like backstory. It was a very sort of... Uh, what's the word? You know, it was very gritty. It was a very yeah. gritty backstory. So, you know, but I just felt they could have done something better. I just don't know what, but still a very gritty backstory. And then that brings us on to Go Kai um, Pink. Yeah, um, Go Kai Pink. Uh, you know, very kawaii. I, I kept being drawn to her teeth. I don't know why I kept looking at her teeth. Um, but, you know, I think they do that sort of rich princess character every so often, which might have been a tribute or something. Um, I guess my, you know, I guess my opinion of Gokai Pink was fickle, which you do need at least one fickle character. But, you know, I liked how she was, yeah, but again, it's a bit yeah. cliche, well, well, it's a bit... How, how do you mean by of, fickle? Uh, that's what I'm trying to explain that now. Like, uh, you know, I mean, whether she was meant to be some sort of uh, homage to... Like that sort of, oh, I am a princess, but I do have a grittier side to me sort of thing. I mean, it is a bit of a Sentai staple. It is a bit of a cliche, you know, just a general cliche overall. Um, uh, you know, I did, you know, but again, her being a fighter just didn't quite make sense. But I but, liked how they gave it a try. But I did like how they gave it a try. But not just that. They also um, gave her, I'd say, a a pretty, I don't know whether gritty, but like it was so, gritty, but it wasn't gritty. You know, I I'd kind say, of felt like, mild the grit with mildly dark backstory. But that's it's, like giving a unicorn gothic makeup, really. But either way, there's also the factor that they also for um, uh, I'm sake they gave her how she trained. And so on and so forth, which I thought was rather interesting as well. <clears throat> sure. sure. Um, All right. I'm just going to go straight on to villains. Um, go for it. I, again, I can't remember their names. Well, I remember my favourite villain was actually the Prince Prince Gil. I think we, you know, Vice Gil. Vice Gil, uh, the main villain's son. Um, you know, the one that was there from the very beginning. 
uh, looked, you know, he was, I like, he was quite comedic, found him funny. Um, I was quite sad when he went, but it was what it was. Then you had the green woman who really irritated me. Um, in some. Whatever. And then you had the two guy generals who were, one was a blockhead and one was Joe's mentor. Um, the blockhead, I don't know, that's like, yeah. But Joe's mentor did actually seem quite cool to me. I'm just like, stop being manipulated. Remember stuff. So, you know. So, Riding I soul. actually... Yeah, Barry Zorb, that's his name. And, you know, I really like... You know, it was like, I didn't like Barry Zorb, but I liked how they sort of, you know... I mean, again, they're kind of doing that in Carmen Rider Drive at the moment with Chaser. It's like, oh, he's this close to remembering stuff. Reset button. You know. Uh, they yeah, didn't that's, do that that's... with Barry Zorg. He was always, like, one one level that, 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 that never got tinkered, which I loved. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and then you got the main villain, the black dude. Well, the black coloured dude, the black monster dude. Um, what? I was... Just, what, you mean uh, Vice Gil's father, A Aki Akudos Gil? Right, um, yeah, I, again, he was just more ha ha ha, and I didn't really feel him. So, what do you think of the villains? I loved the whole um, uh, evil empire, and I'm actually going to say that flat off that <clears throat> how Zang each one. Zangak, yes, the Space Empire Zangak. I love the fact that how all of them contributed in their own way. Yes, I will agree that there were some weak characters, but what do you expect? Well, the Monsters of the Week were pretty good, in my opinion. True. I'm not going to deny that, but I meant as in, in general, I meant as in the, the, the main. The main. You know, the, the um, commanders and generals and whatever. I loved Vice Skill. I loved um, Vice Kill as a whole, honestly. I just thought he was the jester, the clown, of, and the fact that he was the, the snobbish prince on the throne, I loved. I loved it so much. Um, I loved how each of his subdominants played a significant role to have it their way, to manipulate the the prince towards their way, I thought was brilliant. And the fact that his father, the emperor, came down to cause not World War Two basically, but avenge him and just go all out on the Gokaijas with the entire fleet. I thought was brilliant. I just love uh, it. Hello, TT, but I did, you know. Uh, I just, no. It, my point is, is I've not seen anything like that. Number two, the fact that, uh, what's it, he never got a final form. He is the last boss, basically. I just love it. The fact, oh, you know, they killed my son. I will get my revenge upon them kind of thing. I just loved it. It was, it was simple. It doesn't. It, he didn't need a final form because that is the final story. So to say, the avenging. It's just, I love it, and yeah. Oh, which reminds me. Uh, opinion on Gokai Cinema. Oh, we'll come to him. Okay, fine. When you're ready. Um, <laughs> what I remember. What is your opinion on Navi? At first, slightly annoying with the time it go, uh, just, um, but I actually didn't mind it. I actually didn't mind it. I, I thought having a mechanical parrot, but not as annoying as a parrot, like a female parrot, I thought it wasn't bad. I'd say that Navi was like a step down from Bomper from Gawanja, because Bomper was really annoying. I can but actually get, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good way to work. Kind of way with it. A toned down version. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Agree. So, what do we think? Of... Although saying that, what did you think whilst we're on Navi? What did you think every time Navi would somehow come out, come up with a clue to where the yeah. next? Um, I thought that was quite a funky little gimmick. Yeah, basically each episode or each new Sentai reference, Navi would come up with a clue or riddle as to who it may be. And I'm like, who is it? It's a bit bizarre, really. But, but then you also get the clue within the sub or well, the, the title of the episode as well, anyway. So. Yeah, but bear in mind the Gokai just don't know the name of the episode. Um, what do we think of... The Go Kaijas, Civvies, and Armor. Okay, Civvies, I start off with um, their basic uniform, so to say, the pirates. Yeah. I love it. I just think each one gives them the, their character, so to say. I love how, still as well, uh, what's it? Like, they have their own pirate attire, even though it's a very. I have my own colour thing, just a reference on that colour of the Ranger, but somehow it works. Even still, even if uh, I'm uh, still wears his Princess Lolita thing, even though if it's just for, you know, the appearance and whatever, but still, she even still wears her pirate jacket, and it works. Somehow, it works. And as always, Marvelous Joe and Luca always does it for me in regards to the civvies. They just look so badass as a trio. Indeed, uh, I agree. Uh, in regards to the, uh, the uh, henshin outfit, uh, the ranger outfit, I would say, yes, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, when I saw the first images, I was like, uh, okay, I'll have to watch just to make sure. And then when I did after the first episode, I was like, wow. The helmet looks amazing. Uh, their, um, the, how can I say, their outfit looks amazing. The fact that it looks like a, almost like a semi trench coat kind of thing. It looks so good. The, it, it's like, wow. And the fact that they even pull it off, or that the fact that they actually did pull it off as well. And they even deliberately gave them pirate esque boots as well, in ranger form as well, which I it's like, nice touches as well. It's like, so well done. I can never stop gushing on how good they looked as well. I mean, I'll say, uh, alright, so going on the civvies, uh, I mean, Captain Marvelous is the only one that actually looks like a pirate in my opinion. I mean, you know, because Joe kind of is a close second, but yeah, you know, he's a lit, but they're all a little more smarter, if anything. Um, I mean, like Luke had a bit of a bizarre look. I mean, I am obviously went for the princessy look. I don't even know what Doc was meant to look like. He looked like a school uniform, you know. <laughs> but you know, and obviously Guy coming on to go Kai Silver a little in a bit. But you know, I really like the civvies. Uh, when it comes to the actual armor, the henshin. Uh, the helmets, re I love the sharp look of the helmets. Yes, um, yeah. Very original. Yes. And yeah, so was the rest of it, you know, the fact that it was like a, a jacket. For... It was a jacket, and then they had, they wore like deliberately yeah, black that, under. You know, to be a bit fashionista about it, I like the layered look on the chest. Yes. Uh, and they and had their... their crest on the middle as well, which is nice. Very yeah, good. I mean, because you look at the actual henshin sequence, you see them in black to begin with, so... And then they layer it on top after the 10, the 10, the 10, you know, it's just, it works. Mm. I mean, that that's clever how you mention about the layering as well, and even relating it to the henshin sequence as well, that they, because it's 35, you get hit by one X, 10, and then another one, and then another one, and then finally finishing off with a V in the face. Hmm. Just works. Yeah. Anyway. So let's go on to a guy who could have been sat with us instead. Go Kai Silver. The the Sentai fan who became a Sentai Ranger. 
I mean, I, I, he, I, okay. he got it all. Lucky bastard. I felt... It, he's from Earth. What's that about? You know. I Bear felt... In the, the space at pirate aliens. Uh, you, as a reference, do you feel that he's like the Deadpool of Sentai? Like he's like he breaks the fourth wall kind of thing? Um. Yes and no. Bearing in mind, I don't know, because I don't know anything about Deadpool. <gasps> because I don't know anything about Deadpool, uh, apart from the fact that he's Deadpool. Um, no. Okay. By I that say, I mean, okay. Deadpool like breaks well, the fourth wall. Like the fact that you know he was basically a Sentai fan, becoming a Sentai Ranger. There was. I like the dimension of it. I mean, because you got to remember, you got you got the first episode where right at the end of the first episode, it's like <gasps> they're the thirty fifth Sentais. Yeah, they're the thirty fifth Sentai. It's like uh, okay, so that kind of developed from that really. Um, and you know, I liked his person. I liked the guy's personality. I liked the fact that he was a bit of a smart ass because that's what happens with Otaku. They're real smart asses. So I like that dimension to him. Uh, I liked his peppiness, uh, you know, and obviously just the cover, the sick ranger in one hit. Yeah, I like that it was a slightly more stylish helmet and look. I mean, a bit sort of, you know, the helmet looked like he was frowning, you know. Uh, but the one thing that I liked was go the mode. Yeah, I mean, the fact that, you know, I mean, the story behind it was also really good as well. The fact that he was able to merge two Gokai keys together, that's Go on Gold and Silver. He then he then found the inspiration to merge 15 Rangers together and ended up with 15 Sixth Rangers on his shield. Uh, bearing in mind that uh, I was seeing some criticism in recent years well, very recently, that Geki Wolf and Geki Chopper weren't considered additional rangers, even though someone like Abare Killer was, and he was part of the tribute for the Zord, or Mecha rather. Uh, I mean, I will come to, we'll talk, I'll talk about his Mecha, uh, so, yeah, I'll talk about his Mecha, we'll talk about the rest of the Mecha later. Uh, but I'll say, you know, I liked how he had a three-in-one Mecha, I liked the story behind it. You got uh, Priest Barai, you got uh, a Barry Killer and Time Fire, I think it was. Anyway, so you know, I like the story behind that. Uh, and you know, the one I liked its finisher, Triple Dream Dream. That was just like, what did they say? Uh, so I kind of really liked Guy. I liked, you know, the general, just Guy in general, just everything about the character and what powers he had. I I liked his fashion as well, very quirky, very hip. In my opinion, I think I I think you hit all of the well, what I was going to say that, but I'm going to add that, and I will stand by what I say that I think it was very ballsy for a Toei to do a um, pretty much almost breaking the fourth wall, and you actually have a Sentai fan becoming a Sentai Ranger. Well, I guess it kind of set a precedent for a Kiba Ranger, right? True, but but a Kiba Ranger was a, a joke series, so to say. You did say that Gokai Silver was a joke ranger. I mean, he had I me, mean, you know, because you had Black Condor uh, appear in uh, the Jetman tribute, and even though they had the same name, he couldn't see the damn guy. He couldn't see him, so yeah. I thought that was very, very comical. Hey, yo, I mean, just the fact that he was always dying to see the next tribute ranger pop up, ca- you know, the next oh. tribute series cameo pop up. What's more, the we, fact that every time he we get a cameo in, he's like, "Oh my god, this is him!" kind of thing, and he's <laughs> towards guy kind of thing with his uh, autograph book and everything. Such an otaku, but I I felt like his character works. It's like, yes, that's what I'd be if I was there, kind of thing. I think it adds that 
extra layer for an anniversary that is so well done. I would not have thought of that for a Sentai ever. That's like the last thing I'd ever think about. And yet they did. They executed it so really well. I love this series. It's so, again, otaku, how it would be. And then at the same time, his uh, henshin form, I thought was, it had a more, his helmet had more of a motorcycle-esque feel to it. But otherwise, again, with a nice uh, silver jacket as well, everything, it just worked. Everything was clean. Uh, his weapon is that of a humongous trident, which I'm not complaining because it looks amazing. Uh, bit, the um, armor that... What? It's a bit mental, I said. We'll get to weapons and arsenal later, but anyway. Uh, but oh, in going. regards to the gold yeah. mode, though, that his... Uh, yeah. He, yeah, the fact that, uh, what's it, he gains that through the mishmash of 15 sixth ranges ish. And yet, um, you've got, what's it, it feels like Dragon Ranger's, uh, what's it, shield with 15 faces on it. It's basically, if anyone was wondering what the hell it is, oh, and um, with the a new visor, so to say. So like a Shurikenji. Yeah, Shurikenji's like, uh, what's it, when he changes his uh, face. Um, so Ben says it's a new visor. Otherwise, I think, and his story as well, they do for Guy, how he gained his uh, range of powers, I thought it was brilliant. Um, and even uh, Marvelous gives him an unofficial trial of how to become a Gokaija was, I thought was brilliant, the way that they did it. Sort of like an initiation challenge. I don't know if you know which episode I'm on about, but... I uh, remember. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really well done. Um, after you. Yes, so what do we think of Gokaiju's weapons? Bearing in mind, I'm just going to go straight into it. I mean, I like the fact that they didn't have any spe spe specific weapons, which was very ballsy and isn't, but, you know, it keeps the merchandising minimal. But I liked how, yeah, each one had a sword and a gun. And then rather than just sticking to each range, just sticking to their sword and their gun, it's like, give the swords to Joe and Luca and give the guns to Aim and Doc because you know Joe was very hands on you know he was the ma he was the master swordsman and Luca was just the badass you know actually attaching the swords to strings and then you've got like Doc and Aim just being the good marksmen uh yeah you know, I thought that was very ballsy very original and it actually added and it's very rare to see this, even though, you know, I mean, all right, Tokyo did a good job on this. But the weapon, you know, doing that, you know, the weapons actually setting the bounds for the choreography. Yes. So the fact that it was Joe and Luke with two swords really pushed the boundaries on the Go Kaija's unique choreography. We'll yes. come, I mean, I mean, we can come to our choreography in a bit, but. The we the weapons as they were as Go Kaijus really set about their own choreography. I completely agree. I mean, first off, uh, the fact that the main weapons really was just a sword, uh, like a pirate saber and a pirate pistol. Number one, the sword looked amazing. Number two, the gun looks amazing. I loved the appearance. I loved how they were. They weren't too over the top. They weren't too little. It was They're very piratey, weren't they? They were what? Piratey. Yes, but it it was so piratey that it worked, if that makes sense. Like you can tell that they put so much finesse in the look of the sword and the gun, but the way that they actually fought with it worked. That's the that was you know and then, um, like you mentioned, uh, what's it, the swapping of the weapons, like the fact that they didn't need, you know, their five-piece uh, 
howling cannon mishmash of a thing. Uh, well, yeah, I mean... You didn't was, need it. And I, I, I'll get... I'll get kind of there was, no, it was... No, it wasn't called the howling cannon. No, 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 no. No, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. But, I mean... No, but I, the cannon that they had, the bazooka thing they had... I mean, it wasn't... Gallium Buster. Yes, yup. I mean, I put, I mean, it's not as cool as it was, you know, putting the keys in, it lines up to make the site. I mean, as cool as that was, I just kind of felt it wasn't necessary. Agreed. It's, yeah. Agreed. Um, I mean, obviously, and then you got, what, Gokai, Silver's, Trident thing. Now it's a bit mental, um, as I said. The but, fact that no, the Trident had three forms as well. With the sword and gun was good enough, really. I... Okay, apart from the sword and gun, I loved, uh, what's it, Guy's triple changing trident. So it had the trident mode, the gun mode, and the spear mode as well. Uh, slash anchor. Which I thought was brilliant. The way that it's actually designed was absolutely mental, as you say. Otherwise, um, the, we'll get to choreography, but, uh, later on, but otherwise, as you mentioned rightly, that I cannot think of any other series, season slash series that actually had used their own fighting style technique. Whereas Tokyo is the only one that I can think, as you rightly said, that actually uses everyone else's weapons, but partially and deliberately because they change into their other colors. Whereas this one, they not only did they use their previous 34 series, but they have their own style. So it's an interesting uniqueness. Uh, hmm, no, I'll agree with you on that. Alright, so what do we... Alright, so kind of moving on. What it. did you think of the Mecha? Right, this is where we're going to clash horns. Right, I'm, I'm going to take the lead on this one. I, personally, I'm going to st say straight off the bat, I did not like... Uh, okay, lies. I like Gokai Galleon as a ship as a whole. Everything else, all the other four, I did not like. I did not like um, Gokai O. I didn't like it. Uh, I, I... When they start bringing in the featurettes, though, the... Um, Additional mechs. Using previous mecha as armaments. Yes. Much. Brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Like Magic Dragon, and then you have it, the dragon uh, popping out of his chest and having wings as well, for some reason, coming out of the front of the shoulders. But anyway, um, I just thought it looked so stupid it worked. Um, I loved how my favorite one was you disassemble Gal Lion to have the legs of Gal Lion and then you have um uh what was it the the, well, Shink I'm the Shinkenja's logo on the legs as well oh no and on the arms as well and then you've also given them a new weapon as well which I thought was just brilliant um I think uh, Hurricane just one was... Uh, oh, it's alright. No. Um, one of those Hurricane Ball things. What? Karakui Balls? Yeah, there was something Karakui-esque about it. Yeah, I see that. I can see that. But I think it was more on the reference to Hurricane Jizz first Super Megazord mix of the five, if you know what I mean. Mixed with the green, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, it did have the Shurikenjas feel. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise, I will also say that uh, Guy's mech, the uh, pretty much triple changer ish, is like the first I've seen a triple changer in like ever, I think. I Correct me if I'm. Ah, oh, triple chain. I mean, uh, yeah, no, there are examples. You've just got to really look. I mean, like I think O Ranger had the example, the wheel thing. You either know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I know. I know who I'm. I know who you're on about. But the wheel thing can only change from a wheel to a robot. Um, 
and then you have the red thing with the star on its head. Anyway. Yeah, but either yeah. way. Again, uh, I mean, I'll say. No, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. One more sec, one second, one sec. But I was also going to touch on the fact that, that uh, what's it with the what's it guys? Um, uh, uh, go ju go go ju jin. Um, that um, I I liked it. I liked the uh, it was like a flying spaceship drill thing. Um, that converts into the um. Uh, Sort of biggest reference to Dragon Ranger or biggest um, copy, but in a good way, of Dragon Ranger Dragon or Dragon Caesar. Caesar. Sorry, Dragon Caesar. Um, and then after that, it's then trying to do the biggest knockoff of um, Megatron. Uh, yeah, uh, Beast Wars Megatron slash uh, good one, nice one. Uh, or uh, what's that, Abareo, um, which. Even though I say knock off, but it's in a hilarious way. You're going to see the blatant reference as well. But otherwise, I thought it was a nice, um, how would I say it, reference slash um, very well executed. Hmm. I say they executed well. Well, going through it all, uh, I like to go Kaigalian. I didn't think the other four parts, yeah, the fact that the other four parts lived in the Gokai game anyway was a bit pointless, really. Because, you know, I mean, at least, at least in, like, most Sentai's past and pretty much every Sentai post, uh, they normally do try to make effort into each role that each mecha plays. Whereas Gokai Galleon, yeah, Gokai Galleon was Gokai Galleon. And then the other four mecha, what the hell were they? And then, Jet, a uh, base so car, I, uh, a no, sub, yeah. and a. I'm missing. But they, didn't do, but they didn't do anything with them. And then, you know, then, you know, I will say I like the look of Gokaio. I actually liked it, it looked good. Uh, I mean, when it comes to using, like, previous Sentai Mecha as armaments, I thought that Ballsy. was a good idea. Ballsy, though. A good idea, but. They were very half assed with it, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, sure. You know, Red Magi Rangers was good. Deca Rangers was good. Um, you know, they went all out for Go Onja for some reason, even though I really hated that series. But it's not like they consulted me about it. Uh, you know, they did some mad thing in the movie for Go Ranger, for obvious reasons. But, you know. Uh, you know, and you mentioned Hurricane you mentioned Shinkenja. Gal Rangers, but, but, you know, where was the Ghost Age mech? Where were, you know, because there were some that weren't actual mech, mecha, they were, like, just a glowing power. I think there was quite a few like that. And that was a massive cop out. I mean, yeah, on one hand, I say massive cop out, but at the end of the day, they were trying, you know, it was never going to work with 34 mecha. You know, 34 previous mecha to choose from. Uh, so, you know, I felt they could have done, you know, I mean, even if you were to say, all right, don't do like mecha armaments, do like 34 weapons to represent, but that might be a bit cheating, or that might be cheap, or it might have been rubbish. I mean, you know, you look at a Kiba Ranger, again, you know, they kind of did that. It's like, oh, here you go, have some handcuffs to represent Deca Ranger. Well done. You know, but. You know, I just kind of felt that they were a bit over ambitious doing that with the armaments because they didn't. You know, I mean, why does Go On to get its own, you know, map, whatever the hell that was, a whole new mecha, which technically is cheating. You know. Um, I will partly. And then, also, like coming on to what's his face, Go Kai Silver's mech. Yeah, I did like how monstrous the dinosaur mode was, and you know, I wasn't really, I wasn't really impressed by the spaceship one. But obviously, being Gozu Jin, I think it was yeah, Gozu Jin, whatever. Or Ju Jin. Fair enough. It's quite yeah, however it's pronounced, it's quite cool. Um, I. I'm gonna go against you in saying that I actually think the for the amount of uh, forms that they had in 
the show, like the amount of um, armament mechs that they had, I thought it was just right. It the wasn't ones, too much. It wasn't were, too. They were good, but what? they just it just wasn't. They didn't do it for thirty four, which is cheating. It's true, true, but at least they made some reference to the other 34 as well throughout. But it was a bit poor though. I mean, where was the Jetman mecha armament? You know, I think quite a few of them were just, oh, glowing feelings within the mecha. It's ridiculous. But that's the point. I mean, you know, it's, fair, it's fine if you like, you know, because I like Decoranger, so the Decoranger armament was cool. Well, Magiranger was quite special, so I like the Magiranger armor. Gower Ranger, I really didn't, you know, as much as that was an anniversary series, I was a bit like, meh. You know, Go Ranger's obvious, but if you didn't like a particular series, like example, I really hate Go Ranger, what the hell was that about? You know, ugh. Uh, the fact that, that they made a, what's it, a, a falcon head with a race car kind of thing to call That's it this. Point. I don't like it. I don't like it. You know, I, don't, I didn't like it, so I don't know why they got special treatment. Extra special treatment compared to something like Jetman. Um, otherwise, right. I, I, oh, me, but... All right, moving on. Yeah. Choreography. Ah, uh, yes. Do you want me to lead this one? No. I will say that I, yeah, I mean, as well as saying about its own original choreography with the weapons, I liked how whichever Sentai they were paying tribute to, they would pretty much mimic the choreography of that series. That must have been a lot of effort and hard work. I mean, yeah, it was evident from episode one where they imitate Go Kai, Go Go Ranger, all the way through. You know, I mean, again, yeah, you know, when they're paying tribute to Ninja Sentai, so they're paying tribute to Shinkenja, they're paying tribute to like Car Ranger, Turbo Ranger. It's nuts. So you know, for them to pull that off was nuts. And then you know, the one thing that we'll talk about, right? You know, the fact that they would mix, you know, changing into two or three Rangers in one sequence was also very ballsy. But talking about choreography and the whole Henshin, you know, Gokai changes, you're looking at the final episode for that, which will come to right at the end. But I really loved it. I really loved it. Um, yeah, I think you pretty much summed it up for me. And uh, I love the fact that, uh, what's it in regards to the choreo... Um, as you say, the choreography, like even in one sequence, let alone the last fight, which I'm not even going to mention anything of it because I don't want to ruin it for the viewers. Um, just the fact that they use multiple forms in one fight sequence is ballsy enough as it is. The fact that the stunt actors or whoever, the suit actors underneath that, has to memorize not only the ones that they are to be in character, but the other two or three that they have to be in character after for the next form, to actually play as that reprisal role, I think it's so respectable towards them as well, to actually execute it so well, it's high high praise for them. Um, and yet the execution was absolutely, it's like you're watching you feel like you're watching Gokaija representing, uh, using the first episode as an example, representing uh, Go Ranger, but with a hint that you know that it's still Gokaija with their voice. I guess. I just, I think they did a smacking good job. And that, uh, I mean, even if the Monsters of the Week themselves were a bit cheesy in regards to the fight or whatever, but the fact that the style, you can tell that some of them were really serious and they really pulled those off well, or even the cheesy ones, they're a bit uh, kind of finicky, but still, it was still pulled off well. I loved, I actually loved all these fight sequences as a whole, to a point that I can almost, and I'm actually going to say this, that I'm you could almost sideline the mech fight that 
if I could just have this series as regular fights, I'd love it. With no mm. max. Fair enough. So, uh, next topic, I'll let you start. The locations and sets of Gokaiju. Okay, so starting with Goku Galleon as their main uh, HQ slash base slash whatever. Um, loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Even the fact that they used um, the Crow's Nest as a set piece as well, every now and again as well. They even used Doc Slab as well a couple of times as well, which I thought was rather clever as well. Um, and they kept it simple as well. They kept it uh, nice and spacious for the main area. So it felt nice and big and fresh and unique and so on and so forth. And uh, what's it? I, I just liked the uniqueness of it. Um, and you felt like you were in a pirate ship. Okay, yeah, if, even if it was slightly modernized slash space-esque. But the essence, you felt it was there. Um, the enemy's HQ, the Gigant Horse, I loved it. I loved the fact that you felt like you were on a... Sort of like a USS Enterprise esque kind of I'll feel. I was thinking that, yeah. But with a heck of a lot more grey. Um, I loved it. Right, but yeah, go on. I loved it, that. I loved that. Um, and otherwise, you'd have some snippets in there, like, for instance, uh, the enemy's brig, their storage rooms, for instance, and just it just works. It, they kept the same. Feel that you were still on. You can tell that you're still on that ship. So that was good. They kept it consistent. Uh, in regards to the other locations, um, some were very stereotypical. That like it's like oh yeah, I've seen that before, been there, done that. Others would be like, um, oh, where was it? Like for instance, if it was a reference, like for instance, and again in the first episode, like the curry house, for instance, it's like you're there more for the reference than the uniqueness so it's like nice uh or even the police station which i shan't mention but in episode two you will see the reference um so it's some of them some of the locations are for the reference which i like than for what the actual place is like if that makes sense yeah um so i love that i like that i really really dig that um otherwise i think I yeah that's my oh and the cockpit of um uh what's it Gojujin but then that's just meh nothing well, special I, I anyway say, yeah I will say that I like I mean yeah when it comes to the villains is it Gigan Horse Gigan Horse whatever yeah Giga, horse. yeah yeah uh, yeah, uh, like things. yeah, you know, I, it was kind of cool on the inside, looking a bit US enterprise ish with the sliding doors, etc. Um, and you know the panels and stuff. I mean, I preferred got you know, looking at the base from the outside. Uh, you know, it's quite, it's quite flamboyant. Uh, it was it pretty much a chariot. Galleon, I liked Go Kai Galleon basically looking like a pirate ship, uh, but I liked. Uh, Basco's um, base his one was pretty cool um, and yeah we didn't really touch on Basco because he's the one that we forget we keep forgetting well, okay uh, after this one Basco we'll go to Basco was, was quite cheeky I liked his little trumpet thing you know Sally what the hell was Sally about but you know I liked uh, Basco's uh, sort of frilly jacket and his monster form was just mental but yeah, I liked the locations that Basco's was, you know, appeared in. You know, like you've always got it in front of a stadium in, with like lots of stairs and loads of studio, you know, lots of stadium-based sets with him. Uh, when it comes to Gokai Galleon, um, you know, I like the typical pirate ship look, but I like the Gokai cockpit that's quite cool. And yeah, you know, it was a bit. I was a bit confused with the fact that they used the ship stern as a control for the Gokaio, for the Gokaio, um, and you know, I mean, look at the first episode where it was like all wrecked buildings and stuff. They normally use that sort of set, you know, like final episode of Magi Ranger or something, 
So to use it in episode one is very ballsy. Uh, da, 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 da. You know, and then like their outside locations are very used before. I mean, when they did the Go Go Five tribute, I was like, yeah, all right, that's very sort of city esque. I mean, you know, to do the Deck Ranger one in episode two was very sort of difficult to do, bearing in mind. You know, was Decker Range set in the future? Where the hell, when was it set? You know, it's crazy. But, you know, they pulled it off quite well overall. Um, um, and, you know, obviously they did the whole mountain thing. Like, they're always fighting in a quarry or something. No, 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 no. But do you, do you get my reference when they go to different locations and such? That, like, lo- lots of them are deliberately references. Yeah, to, like, like, like the Jetman one was as well, yeah. That's why I think it's a humongous a nod uh, to the location as well. The fact that they put so much detail upon it, like, uh, like for instance, like you mentioned about the Decker Ranger, like that is set in a police station, and the fact that that they it wasn't even a shoehorn. The fact that she was there, that uh, spoiler alert, the Decker Yellow was there. The fact that that you feel that she wasn't shoehorned but she was part of that precinct that I thought worked really well um otherwise uh what was it uh, unless you have any other thing to touch on locations and such I'm gonna quickly mention about Vasco from my end Go for it. I loved his character I loved uh his serious sort of like almost like a, a joker-esque character um sort of that sadistic kind of uh play um and his backstory which i'm not even going to start talking about because it's absolutely amazing um i loved uh his banter with a marvelous calling him Mavejan. Uh, which was hilarious. I loved his um, sidekick, Sally, that's like a short, fat baboon that uses, for some reason, a pair of symbols as weapons, but somehow... Oh, that's, mon- that's what monkeys have. They have symbols. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, like the wind-up monkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, clever, and it worked. That's the weird thing. It worked. Um... And yes, uh, to the fact that uh, what's it, Gokai uh, has the Gokai, uh, sorry, Mobire to uh, become them in a sort of decayed reference, you know, say the Busker was the the end version of that. In that, instead of becoming it, he summons the uh, previous. Yeah, or always just say the previous sixth ranger. Um. Otherwise, he, and as you say, his uh, monster form looked absolutely dark, is all I can say. It's just mentally dark, as you'd say, I guess. Otherwise, I loved it. I loved his ship, as you say. It is, well, it's very simple. I like it. Um, yeah, and then, I, yeah, go for it. All right, well, we didn't touch on music for Go Kaija. I like the OP. Okay. Uh, had it as my tone for the year, had it as my ringtone for the year. Uh, and then, you know, you got your end theme, which was basically three different verses trying to pay tribute to 34 Rangers. That's just nuts. And, you know, it must have done well for their music sales, I'm assuming. But otherwise, I kind of thought that the yuck. You know, I mean, all right, yeah, it's cool describing each Sentai in the line. But, yeah, I was just like, yeah, I really like the opening thing. Let's go, let's go, Kaija. You know, um, I really did like it. Um, See, this is this is what I'm going to... the series, I liked how they would nod at each different era's theme. So, you know, it was very ballsy what they did. Mm. What I'd say is... Normally I don't say this, but with, in regards to the opening to start with, I'd probably only listen to it with within the actual series as well. That it actually works better with the actual action sequences and everything. That's what I'd say to that. I don't think I would be able to listen to that actual opening 
uh, as an original mm -hmm. or on its own, just audio based, if that makes sense. Yeah, alright. Well, obviously, I have pretty much every Sentai soundtrack. So. Yeah. yeah. Ending voice, I felt that it was a better version to the Go On Just style. Uh, if that makes sense. No, 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 no. But if you see one go. Saying yeah. that, I actually didn't mind it. Um, it did get oh, very yeah, tedious. I'm not going to deny. I'm I'm not going to deny. It'll get very. It does get very tedious, but I actually didn't mind it. Um. Yeah. Uh, oh, so what did we think? Oh, I, mean, I forgot to touch one thing on choreography. Oh, go on. In regards to uh, what was it the. Met when they were doing it, what's it, the big robot fights and whatever. I love the fact that even in the tribute episodes or whoever's um, cameo episode it was, the fact that they would do the finisher of that cameo's range of form finish in robot mode. Example wise, being Bokenja's reference, for instance, that when they're in Gokaio, even though they don't have Daiboken or whatever reference to that. The fact that they use the Bokenja's key and then they use Adventure Drive as Gokaio was bloody ballsy as it is. Yeah, I love that. That, that, earlier, that was what I was saying earlier, that, you know, instead of doing an armament, they did that sort of thing instead. Again, I kind of felt that was cheating. I don't think so. I think that it's a nice, how can I say, uh, for us viewers. Or so, well, no, but that's uh, the point. If, if they had done that for all 34, sure. But the fact that, oh, some of them got armaments, some of them got a glowy thing, some of them got a finisher, and then, you know, why did Gawanja get a mecha? Okay, I, no, I see, I see where you're coming from in regards to, like, why did certain series get special treatment and so on and so forth. I understand that, but at the same time, from a choreography perspective, I like the fact that, it's like, for instance, um, uh, even uh, the uh, Car Ranger tribute, uh, what's it? I can't remember the actual finishing move, but when he does the whole spinning gimmick, and then, uh, you know, it's like that kind of details. I love. I love. I'm, I'm going by the details here. That's why I love that. That's why I'm, you know. Okay, well, uh, yeah, the one thing that I was going to touch on before we talk about the films. Uh, we didn't cover, I mean, it's very difficult to cover for Go Kaiju because when you're talking about a, any other non-anniversary series, you could say, oh, what was the morale of the story? What was the storyline like? But Go Kaiju, you know, it had the morales of each series it was like paying tribute to in the form of a great power and, you know, whatever Navi was suggesting. And then the story was self-explanatory, really. You know, they were pirates. You know, whatever series they were paying tribute to, they were just pirates looking for treasure where they just ended up in a room with a pyramid thing. You know, uh, so but, what, what did you think of the morale and story? See, this is where I was... I had to think about this one because, like you said, each one, and I'm going to use... Um, this is it. I can't remember. Um, the Magi Ranger tribute, for instance, like uh, basically their morale in that episode alone is basically the courage that they're basically uh, re re reminding the Gokaija that uh, courage gives you Magi Ranger's power effectively. So that's a nod in that that's as a nice reference to Magi Ranger alone. Um, so, like you say, it didn't have. A morale as a whole, but it had a nice references to the others, which is a nice morale on its own as a reminder. Otherwise, story as a whole, I had to think about this or to remind myself the whole story that it did lead into the, um, as you would say, the pyramid in a room. Um, but I loved how, and I'm not going to spoil it, but I loved how the point, the cliffhanger, should I say, once they got into that room, what happens then was fairly 
um, interesting that they really put a good spin on it. If, if that's oh. all, yeah, spin actually. Um, otherwise, what did yeah? Uh, actually, morale, yeah, that's about morale, really. That's about it. Yeah. Otherwise, so uh, now, what did you think of the film. DVDs? Right, so I'm just going to sum this up quite quickly. I mean, the DVD, I remember very little of it. Uh, but, you know, again, they had so much going on in the series as a whole. They didn't really need to do that, but they did. Interesting. Uh, all right, going on to the films uh, in yes. whatever order you remember them in. Which one? Firstly, what? Which one are you doing? Okay, here, let's just list them quickly, because you've got Flying Ghost Ship. Again, I'll list them and describe my thoughts on them. Fine. Right, so the first, I mean, bearing in mind that they did delay the film's releases due to the tsunami that year, uh, I will say, you know, because they released 199 Heroes later that year, uh, I'll be honest, it was a good, good film. Uh, you know, there was a lot going on. They mixed up so many different eras. I thought it was nice that Akka Ranger had made an appearance. Uh, I thought that was really good. And, you know, I felt a lot of nostalgia for it, for that film. Uh, you know, I kind of liked how, you know, it was unofficially Go Kaija versus Go Sage. I mean, especially with Go Sage only being a year old, it would be very tough to pay tribute. Obviously, I did like, I thought it was a bit bizarre, the, you know, the Go Ranger armor, where it's just like spinning helicopter on the back, whatever. Um, you know, they did what they did. Or was that, was that the Bokinger one? Never mind. Go Ranger. Uh, yeah, alright. Anyway, uh, so going on to the Ghost Ship film, I kind of thought, you know, that was just a very typical Sentai film. Bearing in mind, Go Kaija wasn't a typical Sentai series. I thought, you know, they did try, they did try to do this, that, and the other, and, you know, the Ghost Ship was a bit bleh. And, you know, they brought back the baseball monster thing, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I mean, it was a good attempt, but I think I'd say post Go Kaija, the Sentai films have gotten better, I'll say. I mean, you know, you know like, again, I like the Go Buster film. Uh, then you had the Kyoruja film, which was a little better. I mean, Tokyo one wasn't that great. But, you know, Go Kaija, they really tried, so you could tell. And then you've got uh, the team up with Gaban, which was very special. Uh, the team up with Gaban was actually a very good film. I yes. liked. Uh, I mean, because, you know, the following year, Go Buster did a thing with the new Gaban. But I liked the story with the old Gavan, and you know, even though I knew nothing about Gavan, it gave a good story. You know, it gave a good basis onto knowing what Gavan was about. You know, and plus the fact that the guy who played Gavan was two Sentai Rangers, uh, Denzi Blue and someone else. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I thought that was a very, very good tribute. Bearing in mind he didn't appear in the series. So that was a very good tribute. I mean, it was a bit corny when they did the whole split screen thing, but you know what you're gonna do. Um, yeah, I mean, again, if they, uh, you know, because when I talk about that, the film they did afterwards was the crossover with Ghostbusters, and you know, so you had Maggi Yellow, who was also Goal, you know, Jin, Jin uh, Masoto, well, and um, Beatbuster. Yeah. And, you know, I liked how they deliberately put him in the Magi Ranger mecha. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, this feels, you know, this feels good or this feels right somehow or something. He made a reference. Uh, I mean, the Go Buster film, I thought was, you know, I mean, again, it was a very tough film to watch because, well, you know, uh, you know, I could say, you know, they were meant to not have the keys anymore, but they kind of still did. Is a bit there, and then you know finally they appeared in both the first two superhero Tyson films. I mean, the first superhero Tyson film was a very good appearance by the Go Busters, by the Go Kaijas, sorry, at uh, Bloopard. Uh, you know, there's a very good first appearance by not first. Oh, what am I doing? I'm going wrong here. 
it was a very good appear it was a very good reappearance from the Go Kaijus. Uh, you know, aren't you know, apart from answering who would win out of Sentai and Kamen Riders, you also had Go Kai Red facing off a decade and that was pretty good. The following, Superhero Tyson Z, was a bad film in my opinion overall. And you know, just seeing Joe and whoever else sort of run around like acting dumb. I mean, it was a bad film anyway, but they didn't have to drag Joe into it, for goodness sake. And um, that's my opinion on the films. Uh, okay, I have only seen half, or not even half of this, I think. Uh, in regards to the... Go oh, did you touch on the special DVD one? Yeah, the Gokai Christmas. Oh, that one. Uh, I have only seen the ghost ship, which I completely forgot what it was about, and then I've also seen the uh, one uh, yeah. with the with the Gavon one, which I thought was amazing, and it still stands out in my head the fact that, that for one, they even brought the original Gavon back, which I thought was absolutely amazing, well, and to... Uh, and the fact that yeah, they even did that was ballsy enough as it is to get the original in. I love it. I love it. Um, otherwise, yeah, I just that's simple enough for me as it is. Yeah. Okay. So final thoughts on the final episodes. Oh, final thoughts on what we thought of the final episodes and what we thought of the series overall. I'll start. I mean, again, I've, we've made so many references to it. I mean, it was quite. I mean, when it comes to the main storyline, I felt. I kind of felt it was a bit of an anticlimax, you know, alright, here you go, room of the pyramid, make a wish. Ugh. But the last episode fighting the commander was absolutely amazing. It's like definitely the best end sequence ever. Uh, my thoughts of the series overall, I love Go have I been I've been mixing up Go Kaiju and Go Busters. I'm getting really tired. Uh, we've been talking for like how long. Uh, yeah, I'll say that, you know, I, you know, it was a good series, a good enjoyable series. I wouldn't recommend it as a first series to watch. You know, not that it's because it's bad, but because, you know, you should probably get some sort, you know, because you will miss references just yes. because it's been first. So, you know, just on that, don't make it a first series to watch. I mean, all right, maybe, you know, even if you're a Power Ranger fan, I still wouldn't recommend it as a first thing to watch. Um, you know, I mean, it's still a very good enjoyable series. Wouldn't recommend it as a first, but you know, um, you know, if you're someone that dipped in and out of Sentai over the years or have watched random series, at least maybe I don't know, maybe post four? post Bokenja? maybe a, I don't know, maybe four random series. Yeah, go go away, watch four random series, then watch Go Kaija. I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, that's me summing up Go Kaija. But um, bum bum. In mine, I'd say, apart from the fact that I forgot to mention during the Arsenal part, that it, I agree that it was unnecessary to have the Go Kai Galleon Buster, but otherwise, was, yeah. otherwise, um, uh, the storyline as a whole, I love the fact that they kept it true, even though it was slightly long, but they kept it for what it is. They, um, It was good. I wouldn't so, say it was long. It probably wasn't long enough. Dragged. Yeah, um, I love the last fight. Speechless. Speechless. Um, I... On the C recommendation, I don't know who to which target audience to recommend this one for because this is so unique. Maybe you know I don't know. It's not even relevant if you've watched Power Rangers or not. Just if you want to watch something new, just watch. No, that's the point. You wouldn't. <laughs> so yeah, watch some. No, this is for. I'd probably say this is for the veterans. Fair enough. Uh, yes. Yeah, so an interesting one. Right. I'm going to end it at that, and so, yeah, all I can say is uh, thank you for watching another episode with me, Masuo Bushida, and with my Tokubra on the other side of the earth is Fly Woman! Fish through the cam. Fish through the cam! Alright, see you guys next time.